Hi, my name is Dr Christopher Mosley and I'm an emergency medicine specialist here at Charles Garden Hospital in Perth, Western Australia. Today we're going to look at the use of the Mapleton C circuit and how we can utilise that in the emergency and critical care setting for both pre-oxygenation and for procedural sedation. And some of the advantages of using this compared to a self-inflating bag that many of us may be more familiar with. So before we look at the Mapleton C circuit, let's look at a device we're probably more familiar with that you might be using already. So this is a self-inflating bag. We obviously still have these in our emergency department. We use these for those critically unwell patients in cardiac arrest. And we also use this for transfer because being self-inflating, it doesn't require fresh gas flow like the Mapleton C does. There are some disadvantages to this when we're looking at its use as a pre-oxygenation or procedural uh, sedation device. Now, the reason for that is that it has valves within the circuit, which means for the spontaneously breathing patient, you have to overcome any resistance to these valves. It also doesn't give us any feedback about the patient's respiration. And that's one of the main advantages of the Mapleton circuit. So let's have a look at that now. Okay, so let's take a look at the Mapleton circuit. Here I'm holding a Mapleton C circuit, which is what we use in our emergency department. The most striking difference is you'll see it's got a soft reservoir bag rather than that hard self-inflating one that we're used to. We'll talk about why that's useful in the setting of pre-oxygenation and procedural sedation in the spontaneously breathing patient shortly. The next thing I'm going to point out is where the fresh gas flows. So this is where you attach your wall oxygen and we'll talk about what literage you need to run this when we talk through how to use it. We've also got on the front here an APL valve, so adjustable pressure limiting valve. This goes from completely open to high Good. pressure That'll in the circuit required before we get off gassing. And this creates a bit of positive end expiratory pressure. Finally, we have the patient end where we can fit an appropriate sized well sealing face mask. So before we look at how to use the circuit, let's think about some of the advantages and disadvantages compared to a self inflating bag. Now, one of the biggest advantages I think to the spontaneously breathing patient in our situation is the fact that we can see a direct visual representation of their breathing. We can see their respiratory rate by how frequently the bag is inflating and deflating. And we can also see how much air they're moving with the amount that this bag stands. The other advantage, as we've already touched on with a self inflating bag, there's no valves in this circuit. So there's no impedance to the patient's inspiration or expiration. Another advantage is that it's got a built in APL valve. Although technically different to a PEEP valve, we can treat it a bit like a PEEP valve. In a, in a spontaneously breathing patient, we want no, no, nothing to impede expiration if we have it completely open. But by dialing the valve up a half to a quarter, we can put a bit of PEEP into the system. The other advantage is that there's direct feedback as to whether our seal is any good. Because this is a semi-open circuit, it requires a complete seal around the patient's mouth for the bag to be inflated. As soon as we lose that seal, this bag is going to deflate and it will give us a clear indication that we haven't got an appropriate seal around that patient's mouth. There are some disadvantages though. So for patient transfer or to the CT scanner up to ICU, we wouldn't take this with us because it requires a fresh gas flow. Without fresh gas flow, this bag is going to be deflated and for the apneic patient, we then can't deliver breaths. So that's a situation where we're definitely going to take a self-inflating bag with us. The other thing that we need to watch out for and a disadvantage is if you put this APL valve up to max, then you've got a very high pressure required before there's off gassing and that can result in rebreathing. We're now going to look at how we might use this. So the first thing that we need to do is choose an appropriately sized face mask. It comes with its own face masks with a rubber flange or if you've got one that you prefer, like here, such as this one with an inflatable cuff, then you can use that. I'd also advise trying to put a viral filter and an end tidal CO2 monitor in between the mask and the Mapleton circuit. For the spontaneously breathing patient, it's best to start with the APL valve completely open, and we want to set an appropriate amount of fresh gas flow here. An appropriate amount is going to be twice the patient's minute ventilation. So in a normal patient, that's going to be four to five liters per minute. So if we want to double that for our fresh gas flow, we're looking at a wall oxygen level of somewhere between eight and 10 liters per minute. If your patient has an increased respiratory rate, then we might want to increase that further, depending on the clinical situation. Once we've got the, got the bag set up, what we're going to do, we're going to put that onto the patient just like we would any time we're going to ventilate them. I advocate using a two-handed technique because it's really important that we get a good seal. Once we've got a good seal, you can see that the bag is inflating and deflating with each breath the patient takes. So I've got a visual representation that the patient is moving enough air and an idea of what their respiratory rate is. 
The other advantage is if I accidentally lose my seal, the bag is going to stop inflating. That's going to give me an immediate feedback that I need to adjust my mask and get an appropriate fit, uh, seal. The other thing, if the bag stops inflating and deflating, my seal is good, that may be because the patient's become apneic. Once the patient is apneic, if I want to deliver a breath, I'm typically going to put a half turn or a quarter turn on the APL valve, and that is going to allow me to deliver a breath to that apneic patient. So, that concludes the video on how to use a Mapleton C circuit. My three take home points would be first, to remember to use it for that pre oxygenation period for intubation in emergency and critical care areas, as well as procedural station. My second point would be to remember to set an appropriate fresh gas flow, so typically twice a minute ventilation. And my third point is to remember to set the APL valve correctly. It's important that spontaneously breathing patient if it's fully open, and to avoid fully closing the APL valve because that creates so much pressure in a circuit that you're at risk of rebreathing. Hope you found that useful and I'll catch you in the next video.